Well hi folks, Monday evening, lovely evening, first night I've been up after the hour went forward so I'll probably get a couple of hours in tonight because it's going to absolutely throw it down the rest of the week apparently got to about minus five last night so I just want to see how my frog spawn's getting on I'll just show you how the old plot's getting on because I've been doing quite a lot of tidying up getting it all ready for this coming growing season so it's all good to go, so I'll just show you my main bed, it's all ready to go this is where I planted the onions the other day. Unfortunately, I came up last night and something had nicked about 40 of my onion sets. And I thought, oh, it must be uh, blackbirds. But then I realised that blackbirds usually just pull them out and leave them. But these have been pulled out and disappeared. So something's eaten them or stashed them. And then I found a load stashed underneath this, this plank here. So I'm assuming it's mice or voles, which is annoying. But anyway, I had about 20 or 30 spare ones left so i've filled a few of the gaps in but there's still a few still a few missing which is a bit frustrating so anyway i've put a bit of this up some just some rudimentary chuck some mesh over just to cover it up in case it is blackbirds but once they start to, to take root which a lot of them have done now they won't be able to pull them out because it'd be quite difficult so this is one of the apple trees i planted no signs of any any life yet any buds so I'm not a big apple tree grower, I never grow one at all. Planted one in a pot as well. See how they get on, see if there's any great difference. Let me just show you the rest of the beds. Like I say, everything's, re everything's good to go, all cleaned off now, no weeds. All good to go. I'm going to plant my potatoes in here. And I'm going to do a bit of an experiment with growing some potatoes in some molehill, comp molehill soil and sand mix. Because I've got uh, unlimited amounts of mole oil and I've got about 10 tonne of sharp sand which is no use to me now. So if I can use that and get a good crop then it'll stop me uh, spending a fortune on compost. Because as you know it's gone it's gone through the roof this year. So we'll give a, give a couple of pots of those a go and see how they get on. Carrot beds, that's one of them there. The main one is uh, in over in the main bed, the three boxes. But this is just one I used to grow me big long carrots in on top of the a pile of sand to get some extra depth so I thought I'd give it a go in here get about 30 in that one should be good then this is some of the garlic I planted this was planted three months earlier than this so there's not a great deal of difference I wouldn't say because we've had such a cold winter it's just basically sat there and not grown whatsoever so that's the thing, I said I'd try it to try and grow it early, try and get an earlier crop, but I don't think it's going to make a lot of difference. Whereas this is the stuff, some of the stuff I planted at the same time in the polytunnel, so it's had a little bit more protection. And as you can see, it's a lot more advanced. So we'll see how much, uh, how much better or quicker that is. I'll just show you over here. So I do have suffer from a lot of mare's tail in this bit. Well, I did do. But what I've done now is, this is where my rhubarb and my gooseberries are, I've covered it in, I've put a new, some more wooden edging in, got some proper thick weed membrane and then I bought a tonne of bag of gravel and I've covered it in that. So basically the only way, the only place that the mare's tail can grow through now is through these little raised beds that I've surrounded me, me gooseberries with, sorry, me, me uh, rhubarb with and all the rest will be suffocated so that should hopefully keep it back a bit because all the rest of it's all flags and everything but it does push up through the cracks in the flags and everything it's so pernicious but uh, we'll see how we get on it'll, it'll cover a bit off which will probably stunt its growth because it'll it needs photosynthesize into oh sorry i'll have to show you this the first lambs of the year i don't think i can zoom in we've got the first lamb of the year let's have a look can i zoom in no, can't zoom in, so it's probably a bit far away. Two little lammies over there. And it's going to throw it down, which is the worst weather you can have for lambs, unfortunately. They don't mind it cold, but they don't like it wet. It's the wet that kills them. So hopefully they should be all right. They might come and put some little jackets on them to keep them warm. So pond, pond's clearing up, actually. And as you can see, we've got some frog spore. We've got two lumps of it there, one in there. Now it did freeze really hard last night, but it doesn't seem to have done any damage, which is what I was worried about. 
so I'm quite happy with that so obviously the frogs are still living about so we should have some uh, some of our own frogs put on it sorry tadpoles and little frogs this year this is me uh, perennial flower bit planted a few of those giant alliums the other ones just poking up now the ones with the big purple heads I've dotted a few about in all around the place and it's like I said it's full of perennials and I'll sow some some annuals some poppies and stuff like that in there the dog's going absolutely mad I don't know what's up with him come here sis 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 here it's over here going bonkers anyway like I said I've been having a good tidy up it's only exactly the same with this bit where the rhubarb is because there was a lot of uh, mare's tail in this as well so whether it's uh, it likes rhubarb I don't know but it's not going to get through that and again this is where I planted the other the other onions the little the ones that were really close together and as you can see there's one but there's all these little gaps look nothing in them so it's taking all those as well but it doesn't matter I've, I've grown about 150 so it's not as if I'm short so yeah this bed's looking good now I've repurposed one of my cloches, the one I used to I used to be covered in polythene this to warm things up but it's surplus to requirements so I thought I'll uh, cover it in some netting make a really good butterfly net for the brassicas and it's big enough to get about 12 in that one so it should be good this is a leak bed, this is where I put all the horse muck on last year totally fresh horse muck and it's just all been taken down and I've never seen as many worm casts in my life it's basically just an inch of worm cast on the top which is absolutely fantastic everything is just worm cast so we're taking all the muck down into the soil and then squirted the worm casts out so that should be really fertile this year should be good for growing stuff and then finally my little shrubbery a few things have succumbed they're all right they're just the, fir the ferns that are going to come up later they die back every year but the ivy is looking a bit sickly We've got a load of ivies at home in pots and all those have froze off this year that's the only thing that has died and I've forgotten what it was but that has ceased to be everything else has survived that's looking a little bit sickly and this is my giant redwood which I grew from seed about 25 years ago that's just getting bigger and bigger now that's not going to get worried by any frost considering where they come from but anyway folks just a little roundup just to show you how things are getting on and obviously spring has sprung let's see if you can see them there feeding suckling oh, there's a couple of them they're all, they're all starting to have lambs now so there you go folks proof that spring definitely has sprung but i think we're in for some pretty naff weather so that's about it folks see you later